He's such a leader for this offense and, and really the team in general. And he starts with a pass to the outside. Brooks comes close to the formation as Thompson is back with time in the pocket and just when he thought he had a window. Nine to lead the Big 12 last year. Third and nine, Vaughn, the running back in motion. Keep an eye on him in pass formations as Thompson looks down that side of the field. Thompson set on first down. And it's the first run of the day for Deuce Vaughn. And also leads the team with 30 catches coming into action today. They go to him for a second straight play. Defender, a safety, a linebacker. That can be massive trouble if Thompson's able to get the ball to him. Time for Thompson, who throws downfield. That's the hookup for Deuce Vaughn. As Thompson looks to put K-State on the board first. He's got it to the edge. Nearly tripped, but he stays upright. And the early breaking stories, all you need to know, tomorrow starting at 10 Eastern on ESPN. Second drive for Kansas State. It's Deuce Vaughn, turned 20 years old on Tuesday. He comes across, takes the rock. They beat Texas Tech, and then that was the end of the road for Matt Wells in Lubbock. Empty backfield for Thompson. He throws underneath. Five years with the Bison. Jacardier right. How have you been at one place for 21 years and, and just, you know, not just staying there, but like surviving? I mean, college football is, is a ruthless job. Well, he, their lack of, of depth at safety. But you had a couple safeties go to the National Football League and a lot of injuries on that defensive front. And they continue to battle even here into this week down the sideline. Skyler Thompson and the Wildcats. It's Deuce Vaughn. Thompson on second and ten. Unleashes a quick throw. That's complete. Two points in folk style wrestling for the takedown. Ten yards for the hold <laughs> here in college football. Thompson uncorks it again. Who's standing up right now. He's one of the better pass rushers in the conference. The blitz is on. Pressure comes. It forces Thompson to run. First down, midfield. The running hasn't been quite as much part of the game for Skylar Thompson the last couple years as it was earlier on in his career. He throws back toward midfield. How about the moves here? It's right. And the success on third down, helping keep them on the field. On fourth and one, the Wildcat throw the dice, and it comes up Simmons. Good. I just that, that call just eats me. <laughs> well, as quickly as opportunity was lost, opportunity beckons for the defense, trying to bottle up Deuce Vaughn. Scarlet out tonight, so all red uniforms for the Buckeyes, and uh, the place will be rocking. Deuce Vaughn. K-State has the lead here, 14-5, and they're more than capable of taking this clock all the way to halftime. In that one-point win against Texas Tech last week, he started off 8 of 9 for 85 yards, looking to stay just as sharp on a throw to the sideline in front of a cornerback where not a lot of catches are made. One of the better cornerbacks in the Big 12. All sorts of time here, and a dart down the sideline with Deuce Vaughn. No doubt. Thompson complete to the 40, a turn up field. He is, and then jets out to go wherever work needs him to be the next day. Thompson unloading at the five to the goal line. It's Thompson with Vaughn. He hands it off and a ball wow. into the end zone. There it is. Proved to be a very intelligent move in the first half. Well, the defense has been the biggest point of difficulty for TCU this year. Thompson gets rid of it quickly, incomplete. Down to just one second on the play clock. He takes the snap as the blitz comes on third down and eight for Kansas State. 11.48 third quarter, along with Dustin Fox. It's just a recipe for disaster for TCU. 
Thompson takes a deep drop, steps up, lofts it deep, and it's incomplete there today for TCU. They could have some more points on the board. Had first and goal at the two and were unable to come up with anything, even trying for the touchdown. Drive and got and had some success. I just I really do feel like coming away with zero points there was was really devastating. Skyler Thompson, all sorts of time on the rollout, gets a couple of yards. Uh, you got that Syracuse education. I know you got that know how smart you are. To a second and eight. I took one math class. It was open book, by the way, and I got a C. On a third and eight, the pressure comes. The pass is complete to Vaughn. And this is an opportunity which the Wildcats have not done perhaps as often as they'd like today to really sustain a drive. Flag is thrown as Thompson buys some time. Well, we're a little bit less than two hours away from the start of that game, and we're just past the midway point of the third quarter in Manhattan from a frustrated TCU defense. Vaughn with a jump cut. Two really stout corners for TCU. They might not see too many more passes thrown their way, but here's Thompson testing out the secondary. And you had the best drive of, of really the second half so far, so that's my Thompson. Away. There's some good just defense. one of six. Now with a setting sun in Manhattan at Bill Snyder Family Stadium in Manhattan, Kansas. A 16-point lead for Skylar Thompson and the Wildcats. And they may just add to that total. Daniel E. Matterbebe, stiff arm. Giving the ball back to the Wildcats here with fewer than nine minutes to play in the fourth quarter as they're on their way to a victory. And Deuce Vaughn is on his way to another breakout run. He cuts back. Game record of six. He's only been done three times. Thompson hands it off. Jacardi a right. Oof. See what the mustachioed Messingham calls for here on second and five. It's about to be that chaotic time of the year, Dustin, where college football is in the thick of it and college basketball is just getting started. That's right. From Athens. Miami, Ohio, and the Ohio Bobcats, which, interestingly enough, we, we referenced earlier, Dustin, how the six sack. They need just a yard for the first down. But I think, Dustin, for TCU. And your chances of bowl eligibility they get slimmer and slimmer by the game. Mike, doesn't this feel like a North, North Dakota State game? A smart fan base understanding of the situation. Quieting down, as you would hear in the Fargo Dome as well. To let their team operate on offense. Exactly that. It was initially ruled as a gain on that run for Chandler Morris. But the announcement in the stadium was that it is now a sack.